We've got a continuing storm impacting parts of the east the next couple of days, but overall we're seeing a big weather pattern shift on the way with warmer air in the south, cooler air in the north, and the clashing of those air masses potentially leading to a bigger storm by the time we head towards Easter and afterwards. In this video, I've got all the details on the upcoming pattern, so stick around right here. Don't forget to check out the weather bell trial link down in the description if you enjoy the weather model maps that I present throughout this video. And here's a quick weather question of the day to answer down in the comments, rating your weather from 1 to 10 in your area and telling me why down there in the comments section. Certainly an optional thing, but I'd love to hear from you here. Let's take a look though at the future radar here using our GFS model. And as you can see, as we go through our Wednesday early morning, we've got a little bit of snowfall lingering over parts of Minnesota, Wisconsin, some rain through parts of the Great Lakes region and into the Ohio Valley and Northeast. But overall, it's just rain that we're going to be tracking down down here closer to the southeast that's what's left of our storm system that we've been tracking for the last several days now but you can see that we are going to see this rain train with some showers and storms likely from the northern florida panhandle on up through the carolinas through the day wednesday right along the coastal areas mainly being the zones impacted by these showers and storms that's going to continue to push on up the east coast as we've got kind of that trailing front and boundary a little bit of a low pressure system trying to form along it so by the time we go towards thursday morning we've got rain from central florida all the way on up there to the east coast of maine most inland areas of our coastal um, states are going to stay dry, though, as the system really is going to push offshore as early as um, late Thursday evening going into our early Friday morning, with the exception of New England. But look at how much rainfall this is going to bring to a few of the coastal areas. You can see widespread 1 to 2 inches stretching from the northern Florida Panhandle through Jacksonville, Savannah, Georgia, um, but all the way on up there towards places like um, the coast of Maine getting in that 1 to 2 inch range. Notice some local areas there along the outer banks of North Carolina, the east coast of that state, as well as on there into the east coast of Virginia. Virginia, maybe some spots picking up two to four inches of rain. Overall, though, the flood threat continues to look on the lower side out of this and that rainfall that I just circled over there. That's also going to include a little bit of mountain snowfall over the next few days into parts of the Pacific Northwest, the coastlines of Northwest California, Western Oregon, and Western Washington. But you can see we are going to get some pretty decent snowfall over this region as we progress um, through the end of this week. You can see some spots by the time we go towards Saturday afternoon in the Sierras picking up a couple feet of snow, many higher elevations through much of the Mountain West and the Pacific Northwest. Northwest, getting at least six inches of snowfall there as we head through that time frame as it stays a little active in that region. Taking an overall look though at the pattern ahead and kind of what we've got going on over the next several days, you can see maybe a little bit, little bit of light rain, maybe even some snowfall in parts of the upper Midwest and Northern Plains as we go through Friday. So once we get towards Saturday though, it's looking like the European and GFS model picking up on some kind of system, bringing a little bit of rain to the Midwest, a little bit of some snowfall there, maybe through Northern Wisconsin and the upper peninsula of Michigan. The GFS is a little faster on the timing of this particular system, but you get the point. Looking like some brief light rain, some scattered showers, pretty much smack dab in the middle of our weekend there um, as we go through parts of especially Indiana, Michigan, Ohio, Pennsylvania, looking to get impacted by a lot of that rain going late Saturday into early Sunday. Overarching theme in this area that I just boxed in there, though, that's where it's going to be drier as we head through this weekend and a little bit warmer. You can see there in the southwestern United States, so looking like it's going to be rainy with some mountain snow. And then that's going to be the startup of our potentially next system here. You can see a lot of snow over the mountain west, some showers and storms erupting into parts of the Midwest. Look at this. This is as we go through our Easter in the evening there. Could we have severe storms maybe in Iowa, Illinois, and Indiana out of that? Something to keep tabs on, but certainly just, you know, not panic about yet. It's just something we're seeing on the distance horizon here still five six days out you can see though this system the european model having it evolve to have a northern and snowfall event through parts of minnesota northern wisconsin by monday april 1st um, in the 8 p.m time frame there showers and storms moving along a cold front um, and progressing towards the south and east even as we go towards our tuesday there from parts of the ohio valley back to texas snow on the far northern end and stretching there into parts of southern canada as well so we'll see how this system evolves but it certainly looks like it could bring some heavy rain to the east coast by midweek of next week um, and it certainly looks like it'll be moving a little bit slower as it kind of moves along what's an interesting jet stream pattern and in fact let's talk about that using the gfs model and our mid-level jet stream which is what 500 millibar wind means there on that key at the top of the screen saying 500 millibar wind that's just what we're looking at the mid-level jet stream here say 15 20 000 feet up you can see our jet stream taking a little bit of a wavy look as we head into next week and look at this you can see the jet stream having a little bit of some of those pieces of energy this weekend into parts of the great lakes that's what's going to help to fuel that brief chance for some showers here through that region as we head through Saturday and into Sunday and then look at that you can see the trough digging down over the central United States really diving way down tapping into some of the subtropical energy um, and also using some of the polar jet energy by the time we go towards Tuesday April 2nd at 11 a.m. that's when we're looking at here so certainly looks like a potent system there in the east um, moving out starting Easter and then moving into the east by the time we go through the early to mid part of next week something to keep tabs on because both models are showing it and you can see a trough in the east 
east, potentially bringing in some cooler air behind that system as well. Something we'll have to keep tabs on. Now, right now, behind our most recent system, we've been seeing some temperatures 20, 30 degrees below normal over the northern plains. Overall, though, we're going to see temperatures get back to being warmer than average over a lot of the southern um, and midwestern regions, as well as the southeastern United States by the time we head towards this weekend. Although cooler than average anomalies by about 5 to 10 degrees will continue over many areas of the north. Overall, though, the um, again, overarching theme of these models that we're looking at here, you can see, you can really make out those temperature differences and the gradient there over the Midwest and eastern United States as we head towards, say, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of next week. That's what's going to fuel our next storm system more than likely. But anyway, taking a look at temperatures day by day here, it is very cold for our Wednesday, March 27th in the morning. We've got teens, um, even single digits over a lot of the upper Midwest, the north central United States. Meanwhile, it's milder further on off towards the southeast, but it's close to zero there in many parts of South and North Dakota there Wednesday morning waking up. Um, look at this in the afternoon on our Wednesday. It's pretty warm over a lot of the south and east with temperatures in the 60s and 70s. But again, that is in contrast um, with these teens and 20s that we're going to be seeing for our daytime high temperatures over the Dakotas and Minnesota and northwestern Wisconsin. Yeah, that is not normal for up there even for this time of the year. You can see by the time we go towards our Thursday morning, we've still got this area of pretty considerable um, cool temperatures there, even cooler wind chills in some cases, so make sure you're checking weather.gov for your latest alerts and hazards. Um, single digits and teens up in the upper Midwest um, for lows Thursday morning. In March 28th in the afternoon here, your Thursday, we've got 60s and 70s over a lot of the South Central and Southeastern United States, even warmer closer to the Gulf Coast in some cases there, and with a little bit more humidity. Notice the cooler air shrinking a little bit by the time we go to Friday and being maintained and contained there a a little bit more closer to parts of Minnesota, Wisconsin. Meanwhile, mild 50s over a lot of the South Central Plains there. Friday afternoon, look at this. We've got a broad area seeing lots of 60s and 70s there, stretching all the way on up into the Midwest, the Ohio Valley. Some parts of the Southern Plains in western Kansas, western Oklahoma, western Texas getting into the 80s there, uh, probably with a little bit of some stout southerly winds as we head towards the Friday time frame as well. Over the north, though, still keeping it in the 30s and 40s, so cooler for daytime highs as we go towards Friday afternoon. Here we go. Saturday morning, you can see we've got plenty of 50s and 60s to be shared over the southern and midwestern even regions of the United States. Into the upper Midwest, though, and parts of the northern plains still in the 20s Saturday morning. So definitely the temperature gradient probably helping out with that next system like we were talking about. Um, look at this Saturday afternoon, mid and upper 70s over a lot of the southeast, close to 80 in the Arklatex, um, into, well into the 80s in Dallas and Oklahoma City probably on Saturday afternoon using this. Um, and you can see maybe even record warm lows Sunday in the morning in, in on the Red River Valley there as we've got lots of 60s in that area I just circled there. I um, mean, you can see over the north central United States in that northern corridor still in the 20s as we go towards Sunday morning. And again, it is this gradient of temperatures that's really going to help to probably fuel the start of a storm system late on Sunday and as we head into the early part of next week so your Easter going onward there we're really having to watching that especially in the central U.S. starting Easter 80s there over the entire southern and eastern quarter there as we go towards Sunday afternoon. Notice there, though, again, southwest United States, um, record cold high temperatures back on over there into parts of Southern California, Southern Nevada as well, and Western Arizona possible there, as we've got cooler than average air in that next storm system already starting to work its way through there. And again, look at this temperature contrast in the 6 to 10 day range. So this is as we head towards April 1st through 5th, cooler than average air over a lot of the central United States and even the northern tier. Still a little warmer than average in the southeast. That's likely as that system probably heads towards the east coast sometime around Wednesday next week. That's kind of what this is in Encompassing here in this Climate Prediction Center outlook. That's why it looks above average in precip over the East Coast. A little bit of a break in terms of above average precip over the central United States, but in lots of areas of the Southwest, above average precip there as storms will probably continue rolling in. This is your Climate Prediction Center outlook for April 3rd through 9th. So this does include April 8th, which is obviously your Monday and your Eclipse Day there. And yeah, it's shown above average precip over most of the U.S. except some of those areas that are actually usually cloudier over the northeastern United States. Looking at one model that can take us out that far, and yes, this is very much so in la-la land. We don't really want to talk about this much. It shows, the GFS model shows our usual areas in Texas, Arkansas, um, where, where the eclipse is going to move through, being clear, as you would normally expect climatologically. Um, but you can see, looking back um, at this model, um, back to the time we go towards April 8th in the afternoon, it's showing snow over parts of Tennessee and Kentucky as a storm system moves through a lot of the east, probably clouding it up. Let's put it this way. This system is unreal and doesn't even look correct, so we don't really need to be talking about the eclipse weather this far out. That's what I'm trying to tell you here. 
As I mentioned earlier though, just a reminder to go down into the comments and rate the recent weather in your area from 1 to 10. Leave a comment and tell me where you are if you want to there. Um, but please hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed this video and you want more consistent, accurate, and easy to understand forecasts from me here at One Nation Weather. Upload once every other day here, giving you that accurate information in a 10 minute time frame. So thanks so much for watching. That's it for this one. Have a good day. One Nation Weather.